Welcome back everybody. Somehow in late November the sun is shining and it's supposed to snow tomorrow. Doesn't make sense. We have a couple things we need to get done today. First, the Z is due for an oil change so we're gonna knock that out. Second, we need to see why this wheel keeps leaking air so we'll fill that up and take off the wheel and inspect it. Then after that we might play musical wheels and switch some wheels around on all the cars. A lot of you guys mentioned that these work VS wheels would look sick on the Gloria and I couldn't agree more. So we'll try that out and we'll probably have to grab one of these off the wall and throw it on the 240. And while we're playing musical wheels, we can put on our brand new lug nuts onto the Gloria. Nismo baby. But let's start with filling up this tire. Filled. Since I'm dreading doing the oil change, let's knock that off first. This poor Z needs some love. The paint has been flaking off. And I found some Bondo under here, so there's definitely some previous repair work which explains why the paint's flaking off. It wasn't done right. This headlight trim is coming off. We'll have to reattach this in a better way. And the bumper zip ties are all gone. Fun fact, the KA and the stock VG that comes with the 300ZX uses the same exact oil filter. I usually like to run OEM filters, but I didn't have one here. So mobile one will do. Ooh, looks like we had a pretty good scrape right here. Now this drain bolt is a Nismo, which is magnetic. So I'm curious to see if we picked up anything. Uh, a little smudge, nothing too crazy. If you guys remember the last time we did an oil change on this 300ZX, it was forced. Basically what happened was we scraped so hard that the oil pan burst a hole. That's why there's a little weld mark on the pan right here. And after that happened, I raised the car. All right, let's take the oil filter off. Well, it's an OEM one. lube up the filter so you get a good seal. Something I'm just now noticing is the Mobile One filter is much smaller than the OEM. Yeah, definitely go with OEM if you can. Always increase oil capacity if you can. The threads on the Mobile One filter were not the same, so I think the book at the store gave me the wrong part number. I had to put the old filter back on for now. I'm gonna have to order some more OEM ones. Another reason to just stay OEM. Peyton gave me this oil filter housing for the use of this oil pressure sensor. I'm wondering now if this will even fit in here. It goes all the way down here, but it's pretty close to the oil filter already. And this one is significantly larger. We'll take off the Z32 oil pressure sensor and compare it before we take off the KA sensor. Now, if you're wondering why I'm swapping these sensors, the 300ZX utilizes an oil pressure gauge. It actually fluctuates. It's not just an oil pressure light. And it's all within this. Whereas the KA pressure sensor is just the dummy light. I took off the oil filter just so we can see a little better. Yeah, there's no way this is fitting. I'm definitely going to need some sort of adapter. There's a brace that holds the intake manifold onto the block and it would definitely hit that. I can't even fit a socket over the stock KA pressure sensor because of that bracket. I suppose I could delete that bracket, but I don't really know if I want to. But then we're gonna run into clearance between the oil filter and the oil pressure sensor. I'm thinking when I pull the KA to boost it, I will tackle the pressure sensor job. All right, let's put this drain bolt back in. And to be honest with you guys, I am not too fond of putting the old filter back onto the KA. So we might have to go on a parts run. Obviously there's no filter on this car right now, so maybe we'll take the Gloria or the 240. Maybe the Gloria. I haven't driven that car very much. Let's make sure that we're clear for takeoff. Get this thing warmed up. I'm ready to rock. Try and hold the trim up so I don't damage it. Bah. Oh, that's another thing. Maybe we can diagnose why I have to push this red button down. A lot of people were saying the brake light switch. So hopefully we'll have a chance to diagnose and confirm the operation of that switch. It's a long car. taking back roads all the way there and man it is so strange not having to shift I don't know if you guys know this or not but I've never owned an automatic car all my life I've owned 90s manual ship boxes and don't get
don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. I wouldn't have it any other way. I think it's a blessing I'm able to do that. But this car is nice. The downside of taking back roads here, massive speed bumps. <laughs> it's literally higher than the curb. And there's not just one, there's at least three every time you take a back road. This is my tallest car, so it's no issue. Jeez, another one? That's four now. They're out of stock on Mobile One. STP will have to do 2827. <laughs> Man, look at the dust on this box. Hold up, hold up. Extended life. Still dusty but we'll take it. Man, whole parking lot. You choose to park right there. Not that I'm worried about dents or anything, but come on, man. This one still looks smaller than the OEM, but before we lube it up, let's make sure the threads are the same. They are. Okay, good to go. Let's fill her up. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Funnel Man. Next, let's apply some adhesive and keep this weather stripping on the headlight. Hopefully that stays on this time. Now let's fix the bumper. I guess that's a little better. Next, let's do some wheel swapping. Put the RG1s on the back of the S13 for now. These things are toasted, so it's not like we're gonna be driving the S13. I changed my mind. We put the OGs back on it. All matching wheels for once in a long time. I can't wait to never use the supply and drive adapter socket and these lug nuts ever again. Although I still have them on my Integros. <sighs> Gotta order more lug nuts. <laughs> these lug nuts are prone to stripping not good. And using that socket adapter can be a hassle, especially if you don't have the key on you. It can be annoying. Moment of truth. Oh man, these look so good. Oh wait, this is directional. Yeah, it's the right side. Let's go get our Nismo lug nuts. Now these come with a key, which I guess you could use if you wanted to. It adapts to a 3H drive. I personally just like to use a protective 19 mil. Basically this just protects the wheel from getting scratched when you put the lug nuts on or take them off. It's like a hard plastic. I agree, these wheels definitely suit the Goria much better than the R33 G33 wheels. we go okay okay let's put on the rest of the nismo lug nuts i'm just doing two at a time now i put a bigger tire on the z in the front hopefully it doesn't rub too bad before we were running 215 40s these are 215 45s and the kendas actually run a little bit thicker than i think the rating actually is but that's only one way to find out let's drop this thing down This is definitely going to rub. I think we should take it for a test drive around the block and then see if we need to raise the car a little bit more. Start recording video. An empty charger cable. 
since we did an oil change, I'm gonna write it down in my maintenance log. Date, mileage, what you did. Oh, I really hope these wheels don't rub. Do a turn test. Dude, it's already rubbing. I applied the electrical tape the last time I adjusted the coilovers to protect the threads and protect the junk from getting in there. I raised it about a quarter of an inch. Not too much, but hopefully just enough. And I'm also noticing I need to get the plastic shield here. That can't be good, having stuff collecting in there. All right, let's do another test drive. Oh, it's still pretty close. Okay, so far so good. I don't hear any rubbing yet. Huh. I might just roll that fender, honestly. Notice that the front left was a little bit lower than the front right. So I'm actually raising the front left just a tad bit more. And I did roll the fender a little bit too, so hopefully that helps. Well, third time's a charm, right? Woo, no rub. Success. Let's take off the front wheel on the 240 and see if we can find a leak. Any cracks? Any cracks? Okay, I don't see any cracks. That is a great sign. Hopefully then, it is just the valve stem. I'm gonna go get some soapy water and try and pour it in here. Well, I don't have a spray bottle, but I do have a soapy cup of water. Oh yeah, look at that. Bubbling right up. That's the problem. See if the bead is leaking at all. Oh, I hate when cups pour like this. So stupid. Yeah, the bead looks good. I'm not seeing any bubbles. Just right here. <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna leave this wheel off so we can take it to get fixed. And these two R33 G33 wheels have really small tires, almost too small for this. So I guess we're gonna put on the RG1s, or at least just one. These wheels are so light. Dang, it's actually hitting the coil over like this. The spec was kind of whack on these. Not that it's a bad spec, but it's not a good S chassis spec. It is 17 by nine and a half plus 33. 33 is way too weak for a nine and a half. There's a five mil spacer on there already, but luckily we have extended studs in the front. So we can do a slide on 10 mil, I think, maybe 15. Just for now, it's not like we're driving this thing. All right, actually I'm gonna take off the five mil first. And then just have one spacer. Quick test, does not hit, so that's good. Oh, it's close though, it's really close. I've never mounted these on the front. Let's lower this thing down onto the wood. Now we're gonna roll this thing back so it clears the garage. Straight out the steering wheel. Uh, a little farther back. These RG1s look incredible. I do actually have another pair of them. They're a lot weaker than the ones that are currently on the car. These are nine and a half, like we just discovered. And the other ones I have are eight and a half. 17, of course. But maybe with the correct spacers, it could look really nice on here. All right, now we gotta make room for the Gloria again. Wheels are up, Gloria is in. And also move the welder back here, because we don't need it right now. So it looks a lot more spacious. 
Now I am a pretty big fan of these works on the Gloria, although I do think they are a size, maybe two sizes too small. These are 17 by 9 plus 15 ish, which is a perfect S chassis spec, but they do look a little small in the wheel arch. Well, that came quick. I was in a t-shirt yesterday and it's snowing today. Welcome to the Midwest. Should we try and get some snow skids? I think we should. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's going on, man? What you got going on? I didn't even get to do one lap around this lot and the cop followed me in here. So I was like, oh no, I just I just come here to take pictures. <laughs> it is a cool picture spot, I can't lie. Cool background. Well, I guess we can try and work on the Gloria. Let's see why the taillights aren't working. Also, the brake lights don't work either. I think we should start with looking at the fuse panel. It's all the way down here. Let's pull this thing out the garage so we can actually open the doors all the way. Oh man. 90s Nissans, baby. Here is the fuse panel cover. Unfortunately, I cannot read Japanese, so I'm not sure what any of that says. But it does label what is powered by battery versus ignition versus accessory. Brake lights and tail lights are definitely gonna be powered by battery, meaning that they're gonna have power all the time, not just power only when the ignition is on and not power only when the accessory is on. So at least that eliminates a few areas for us to check. Oh look, this came with some fancy pedals. Is it Razo or Razo? Never knew. And I do think it's funny that there are actually three pedals. This is the parking brake. It's so crazy. Never seen a car like that. All right, check this out. I'm on my phone filming with the flashlight on. Just looking at the tops of all the fuses, you can kind of see that rounded part. See like right under the 10, there's a round U. So I'm just going down, looking at all these fuses and that one is popped. According to the fuse panel, it is under the battery section, 15 amp. Can anyone translate that? I'm gonna replace it regardless and see if the taillights work. And luckily this car came with a fuse puller. That is clutch. A lot of cars don't come with this, but when they do, it's a good time. I know my Integra came with one of these. Yeah. Blown, baby. Found this other 15 amp. We'll slide it on in there. Now there are other ways and better ways you can check the fuses. But a quick visual inspection never hurts. All right, let's test it out. Looks like it did not pop right away, which is a good sign. We do not have a short to ground. Nope, no tail lights still. All right, let's check the brake lights. Working? All right, we're getting somewhere. We have brake lights. Oh, it's a huge plus. Let's keep diving into this fuse box and see if we can find the park lights. Something I'm noticing on this panel is there's a section that says ill. Maybe that means illumination? That would be one of these two. Let's check those out. Is that blown? Oh, it is blown. That's a crazy break. That's nuts. 
Let's put a new one in there. Hopefully that does the trick. Oh, yes, we have tail lights. Since that fuse was blown, I'm wondering now if there were supposed to be lights in the front of the car as well. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, nope. That totally looks like it's lighting up. All right, guess not. No lights in the front with the park lights? Oh, no, here we go. The outer. That's pretty sick, I like that. <laughs> this is somehow still working without a lens. Ah, <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy that the lights work. Oh, we should try and see if the shifter works now. So I guess you have to push down this red button if the brake light switch is not getting a signal. And every time I've had to shift this car, you have to push this red button down and it's been quite annoying. So let's see, foot on the brake. Oh, I feel a relay already. It's a good sign. Oh yes, there we go. Hell yeah. <sighs> Who knew two fuses can make such a big difference? Screw it, let's take it to the spot, the picture spot. The power line spot. I haven't taken the 240 out for a drive in a while. Let's take it around the block. video ever with driving all three Nissans. That's why I wanted to take it around the block. Nothing too crazy because we do have that bald tire in the front so I'm not gonna be cooking it. Oh that wheel is rubbing so bad in the left rear. Had to take it back to the spot. Well guys, that is gonna end today's video. Thank you so much for sticking around. Don't forget to drop a like if you haven't already, subscribe to see more, and hopefully we revive the right-hand drive tag in the next video. That's my plan. Peace. Dude!